Just seven days after surviving an attempt on his life, Donald Trump has held his first campaign rally, lashing out at his rivals in a speech lasting nearly two hours. Despite calls for unity after the attempted assassination, Trump struck a defiant and combative tone, hurling insults at Joe Biden and repeated false claims about election fraud. He was joined by his running mate in the battleground state of Michigan and reflected on the shooting, saying he took a bullet for democracy. Trump also singled out Kamala Harris as his campaign prepares for a possible change on the Democratic ticket. Our correspondents are in Michigan and Washington tonight. We start with Carrington Clark at Trump's rally in Grand Rapids. Yeah! Rapturous applause for their hero. Are we ready to hear from the next president of the United States, President Donald J. Trump? Come on out, sir. Both a survivor and the man who claims he can save the country. They keep saying he's a threat to democracy. I'm saying, what the hell did I do for democracy? Last week, I took a bullet for democracy. The Republican nominee, still sporting a bandage on his ear from his injury, was in a combative mood, taking a swing at the Democrats, asking supporters who they'd like to see run against him for the top job. So who would you like to most run against if you're us, if we want to win? Ready? Kamala Harris. Crooked Joe Biden. Despite being out of power, Trump relaying that world leaders are still in touch. And I got along very well with President Xi. He was a great guy. He wrote me a beautiful note the other day when he heard about what happened. Trump's rallies have been a campaign hallmark since he first ran back in the 2016 cycle. And what was clear today is that his near assassination has only increased his mystique and appeal with his most fervent supporters. These rallies are a major electoral advantage for the Republicans, and it's hard to see them giving up that advantage, even with the lingering security concerns. New details have also been revealed about how close the shooter's bullet came to Donald Trump's head. His doctor revealing the wound on his ear was roughly two centimetres wide and the bullet itself was less than a quarter of an inch or just over six millimetres from entering his head. For the true believers, it was a vintage performance. He saw his life pass before his eyes, right? So. He wants to bring the people together. The train is off the tracks, and we need to get this country straightened out. And we will make America great again. But for Donald Trump to win in November, he's going to have to convince more than just his rusted-on fans that he deserves another four years. Carrington Clark, ABC News, Grand Rapids, Michigan. As Trump's campaign gains momentum, the man who's currently in the Oval Office is facing ever-growing calls to stand down. Despite a week of campaign stops, interviews and insistence by Joe Biden that he will still be running, his doubters remain unconvinced. Pass the torch. Pass the torch. Pass the torch. A small but growing chorus that's fast gaining momentum. We are here today to ask to beg to tell President Biden that it is time to pass the torch. A grassroots political movement calling for change at the top of the Democratic Party ticket for president. This is an existential election, right? That's not just a talking point. That, that is real. Um, democracy is on the ballot. It's nothing against him. I, I support everything that he's done in his four years. Uh, but it's just become very evident that he cannot lead this party anymore. Mr. President, how do you feel? More than 10% of the Democratic Party caucus has now called for the president to stand aside. The machinations over his political future playing out in public as he isolates with COVID-19. For a career politician who waited more than four decades to take the presidency and one who's known for proving his doubters wrong, this isn't an easy decision for Joe Biden and one he's unlikely to make quickly despite the growing ruptures within his party. The president is angry. He feels abandoned. The word abandoned was used several times 
uh, in discussions I've had with people in the White House. If President Biden decides to step back, we have Vice President Kamala Harris, uh, who is ready to step up, to unite the party, to take on Donald Trump, and to win in November. Thank you, Joe. It's time to go. Hey, hey. Ho, ho. The president's maintaining he'll return to the campaign trail next week, but with critical funders reportedly withdrawing, the path to victory is looking shaky. Catherine Dis, ABC News, Washington.